Sean, welcome to Houston. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and it's always a pleasure to be here in Houston. Oh, fantastic. I'm glad to have you here, even though it is in the middle of the summer and it is hot as all get out, but that's how we roll in Houston. I love it here in Houston. It's okay. <laughs> hot, rainy, cold. It's okay. It's all good. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, first of all, for people who don't know who you are, tell them a little bit about your background. You've held many hats and worn many hats throughout your career, and your career has not stopped. So, so tell so, us a little bit about that. So what people don't know is my, my career really started in the swap meets. I was doing swap meets when I was 14. Mm -hmm. I became a dance teacher and owned a dance school when wait, I wait, was... Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, you were a dance teacher? What kind of dance did you I do? Was. I was the king of hustle. No way. Yeah, so if you want to get up and dance a little bit, I'm ready to roll. Don't tempt mm -hmm. me now. I like that. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I owned a dance studio. I went to college. I played ping pong, poker, and pool while I was in college and forgot about studying. And somehow or another wound up in the garment business. Okay. And I, I was a garment manufacturer for 30 years. I retired and my, fa my family, my wife and my five kids sat me down and said, listen, we're really happy that you're retired, but shh, time to get out of the house. What, are they getting and, bored with you being around, just kind of relaxing a little too much? <laughs> well, I, I don't think I relax at all. So yeah. when I um, reorganized the pantry for the second time in one week, <laughs> They said, okay, you're bored, you need something to do. And at the time, a friend of mine said, listen, do you, do you know what these Comic-Cons are? And I said, I really don't. And this was eight, nine years ago. And he said, come with me. And I, I went and I saw all these happy people. And I said, well, that's something that I would enjoy doing. And I learned a lot about it. I was always a comic book fan as a kid. And... I became the CEO of a publicly traded company in 2011, and then I resigned from, from that, and I started my own company two years ago, and we were supposed to actually do our first show here in Houston last October, right before the hurricane came, right before Harvey came, and it was, um, it was devastating for the city. It was devastating for myself personally because of all the time and the effort that we put into doing the show. But as I look back on it today and I think about how the city has recovered, we've recovered as well. And I'm so ex I am truly, truly, truly so excited to do our first show here in Houston. And I will tell you, this is a city I'm planting my flag and I'll be back and I will be back and I'll be back. That's fantastic to hear, and Houston really needs to hear something like that because it really means a lot to a lot of people. Can you explain to people who may not know what a Comic-Con is a little bit about that before sure. we explain exactly what your venture is and how exciting it's really going to be? Sure. Well, you know, a, a, a Comic-Con, which the first Comic-Con was in 1970 mm -hmm. in San Diego where they had a big, big, big turnout of 112 people. Um, in 2003, in San Diego, Angelina Jolie showed up, and that changed the entire world of comic conventions, because that's really what it is. It's about the comic books, and then it turned into kind of a media platform, um, where today, if you really don't know what Comic-Con means, it's short for comic convention, where you'll go into a facility and you'll see hundreds of thousands of comic books. You'll see vendors of all different types. You'll see some of the creators and the artists of these comic books actually right there. Um, and then you'll see the celebrities that make the pop culture and the geek culture so exciting and so great. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, you'll get to see the stars of The Walking Dead like Norman Reedus and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. You'll see Michael Rooker, if you're a fan of um, Guardians of the Galaxy, you'll see Dave Bautista. If you're a fan of This Is Us, you'll see Milo. If you're a Power Ranger fan, you'll see Jason David Frank. Um, if you're a Boondock Saint fan, you'll see Sean Patrick Flannery. If you're a Smallville fan, you'll see Tom Welling, and you'll see John Schneider, and you'll see Michael Rosenbaum. Um, if you're a Superman fan, you'll see Dean Cain. So there, there's, there's lots of entertainment for people to enjoy at these events. And I like to hear that because I've been to Comic-Cons for a number of years now. And what I've always noticed is that it's not just, of course, you've got the hardcore fans, which is amazing, but you've got people who are just being introduced to it for the first time. And it's a wonderful experience for them. And it's also a family experience for a lot of people too. 
completely. Our age range today is six to 80. Mm -hmm. So it's become a real family event. Um, and people come in, you can't, you, can, you know, I found it hard to believe when I first started doing these events that people, the show would open up at 10 o'clock. People would come at six and seven o'clock in the morning just to stand in line. And I never understood it until I switched it around in my head and said, well, that is the Comic-Con version of tailgating. So you get to sit in line and you get to mingle and talk and make new friends and be with people really of like mind. So if you're a football fan and you're one of those crazy Chicago fans that goes to a game at minus 10 degrees, mm -hmm. no shirt on with a B E A R S, we have the same fan <laughs> and we've got the same um, enthusiasm, but they're just enthusiastic about other things. That's why you see cosplayers. So cosplay is short for costume okay. dressing up. And people, if you're a true cosplayer, you make your own outfit from head to toe. And you'll see, I'm sure there'll be thousands of people coming to our show in September in costume and in cosplay. And that to me is so much fun. And it's a, it's a fan favorite. It is. And I've also noticed that some of these that some of the <clears throat> stars who are there have a tendency every now and then in dressing up and you just don't know who it is walking around exploring them. You never know. You never know. right? <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. That's a very true statement. My favorite was Robert Rodriguez when he came to my show in Austin uh -huh. um, and he came dressed <laughs> and nobody knew it was him. Which is so cool because he could enjoy it, but also, you know, just show a picture later that guess who I was. That's pretty cool. Oh, it, it's great. And, that, it, and it happens all the time. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's like my, one of my favorite experiences along the way was we have Sebastian Stan coming to the show. And, if you know, oh, yeah. ever think everyone who's into this world knows who Sebastian is. Mm -hmm. But the only person that he wanted to meet at one of my shows was Lou Ferrigno. He is and, amazing. Met him before myself. Yeah. He's and and I have that picture of, of them meeting oh. together. Um, the, the, oh. the experiences and the memories that I have from doing all these shows. I've done over 100 um, Comic-Cons. They're, they're, the pictures that I go through, they bring back such warm memories for me. Mm -hmm. Well, anyone wanting to meet the original Incredible Hulk is is not a bad person. You got to admit that. That's so. of, of course. That's and Lou, cool. Lou is a dear friend of mine for 35 years. I know oh. Lou. That's Our fabulous. kids went to the same school. They did not. They did so. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, okay. You've already mentioned some of the people who are going to be at what is officially titled Fandemic Tour. That's yes. what it's called. And Houston is going to be your second stop. But while you're but really, here, it's, the it's really it's supposed stop. to be the first. Right. It's the first stop. So um, tell us a little bit more. You've mentioned some names who are coming, but tell us a little bit more about what else other people may see sure. who, who don't know about the Comic-Con, who may want to come, because we want to try to get everybody there, right? First of all, you have to, you have to know our mantra. Okay. Our mantra is take care of the fan, take care of the fan, and take care of the fan. Beautiful. That's our first mantra. So everyone in Houston know that. Our goal is to give you, first and foremost, logistically a, a well-run show. That's what we want you to walk away saying, you know what, those guys really knew what they were doing. Mm. Um, we want you to come in and we want you to be entertained by the celebrities. We want you to be entertained by the unbelievable, fantastic artists that we have coming to the show. I mean, world renowned artists like Arthur Saddam and Michael Golden and Phil Ortiz, Clint Hobart, I mean, um, Rodney Ramos. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And then we'll have hundreds of vendors on the floor selling saber swords and selling t-shirts and selling all types of um, different different things that you could buy of things that go into our world of, of pop culture and geek culture. Um, geek is chic. Geek is, most so, certainly, geek is chic. Always, always my, my, my favorite t-shirt. <laughs> and then we'll have great programming. You'll, you'll be able to go, up, go upstairs into, in the NRG Center and You'll be able to listen to Sebastian Stan, have a panel. You'll be able to ask questions. You'll be able to ask Stephen Yoon questions when he goes up and he does his panel. Um, so it's really very, very exciting. Um, we, we try, we're going to try and make the programming, um, besides fun, educational. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a couple of surprises in there. I'm not surprised at all that there's surprises coming. It seems like conventions do that, but you have a tendency of doing it in spades. So, and you can't give us any hints, can you? 
Don't miss Bruce Campbell's panel. That's all I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Don't 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 miss it because (laughs) Bruce is Bruce. Besides the fact that I love him, he's just the greatest. Good man. His panels are well. He's incredible. So you'll (laughs) you'll see. I think what's also beautiful is that you really are going above and beyond to be inclusive, and that's what cons have already always done. But just opening the door, as I mentioned, different. We always talk about geek is chic and all of that, but inclusive and allowing people just to be themselves. And that's one thing the cons are so genuine about. And I, I think that's really cool. Oh, that's what that's what we're all about. It. We want we want everybody to have a good time. And we want everyone to be comfortable. Um, we have. Um, very strict anti-harassment rules and policies. Um, nobody in our show should ever be taken for granted. Um, everyone will get treated with respect by all of my employees. Um, and that's really what we're about. That's beautiful. Um, we're almost finished, because I know you've got a lot of things on your plate today being here in Houston. One thing that I talk about on my show, which is very important to me, is about giving back. And I know you're very aware of, as you mentioned, what happened with Harvey here, and it impacted so many people in Houston. Do you have any plans when it comes to pandemic tour to maybe do some things in the community to try to help, to try to lift spirits and things like that? Well, you, you know, it's funny that you say that. We're, we're working, we're working on things, but you know, even through all of the devastation last year, we had so many emails from so many people that said, can you still please do the show? Can you still please do the show? Mm-hmm. And I found it amazing. The city's underwater. Yeah. Nobody could get anywhere. People don't have electricity. There are you know, people um, taken away from their homes. But yet people still needed that release and that escape. We could not find a place to do the show or we would have come back and done it. We would have let everyone in for free if we could have at the time. Yeah. Um, financially, it was, it, it was a burden for everybody, even including us, because we were just a few weeks away from the show. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, we're a very stand-up, legitimate company. We returned everybody's money. Everyone um, was able to move forward. And we're here to give everyone a great show, and we will do something in that regards to give back to the community. Wonderful. Okay, and on top of that, what would you do to encourage others to continue to not only help this community, um, but, you know, take time out of their own schedule to, to try to do something for others? And any way that you could chip in to help somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, even if someone walking down the street, um, people that need, need help, you know, clearing out their homes and doing wh- whatever, everyone could chip in. Yeah. All right. And just a reminder, if people want to find out more about Pandemic Tour here in Houston, what do they need to do? They need to go up to the website, which is www.fandemictour.com. Um, go up to the Facebook page. Go up to our Instagram page. Go up to our Twitter page. Um, it's September 14th, 15th, and 16th. Uh, we're, we're selling a lot, a lot of tickets. I would say buy your tickets early so you're guaranteed to come to get to the show, come into the show. Um, and just come enjoy with us. Come have a good time with us. You'll, you'll, you'll just look for me. I'll be the lunatic running around the whole place, (laughs) making sure everyone, I want people to feel like when you come to my show, you're coming to my house and I want you to be comfortable. Well, listen, John, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us to your house. Thank you for bringing this wonderful tour to Houston and really looking forward to it. I know the city always needs to be uplifted and I know what you're doing and what the entire group that's coming is doing is really focused on that. And we really appreciate that. It's really our pleasure. And thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. And tour coming in September. Love it. All right. So guys, be there. You need to be there. All right. Over here too. Be there. (laughs) 